Welcome to Five Star Weekly. It's the first ever matchup against Orlando City in the playoffs. How does Atlanta United aim to advance? We're getting all that and more coming up. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube. Welcome to the show, Five Star Fam. I'm AJ, and Atlanta United have a big matchup. Just three wins to go to get a chip. If we can do it, uh, first obstacle is Orlando City, of course, as aforementioned. But uh, before we get into the preview, before we uh, get into the news and mailbag, let's give some shouts out to the Patreon fam. Uh, specifically, Gavin, Jordan, Niall, Andrew, Chris, and Nick. Thank you so, so much, guys, for all the support all season. But, uh, yeah, let's get into the news. And Alexei Miranchuk, uh, he has scored for Russia uh, a header, a towering header in the box uh, to make it 3-0. And, uh, yeah, had a goal and uh, an assist. But, uh, yeah, good on Miranchuk uh, for that. But, uh, yeah, as well, if you're watching the YouTube uh, video, you can notice a little bit. There's a bit of a new background working on some things. It's a little bit of a work in progress. But, uh, yeah, definitely trying to uh, to level up uh, what it looks like on this as well. But, anyway, so, uh, yeah, next bit of news. Tata Martino, he has resigned from Inter-Miami. Uh, for personal reasons, quote unquote, uh, that's according to numerous sources, uh, also including the Athletic, and yeah, it's kind of kind of nuts. I mean, I pontificated this after the stream, uh, post match live stream against Inter Miami, and I wondered if this was something that, if he wasn't going to be fired, maybe he would leave and. Yeah, he has left. Uh, it is his M.O. It seems like, you know, throughout his entire uh, coaching career, he doesn't stay long in places that he coaches at. And around a couple years, he usually leaves. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, whether it is something that, uh, you know, Atlanta United contributed to or he was going to leave anyway, uh, I mean, yeah, you know, with the Club World Cup that they will take part in for Inter Miami, uh, you would have thought that you know it was maybe something that he would have wanted to take part in. But uh, you know, there is also, of course, Atlanta United fans have a soft spot for Martino, and would he come back? Carlos Bocanegra is not in the front office anymore, obviously, and Tata Martino. And him famously, there was a bit of tension, uh, especially regarding uh, moves uh, with players. But as well, you know, Tata Martino is uh, is this, you know, the Inter Miami stint has it marred, you know, anything for LA United fans. Obviously, he won us the MLS Cup in 2018, uh, and it is something that you wonder, you know, is uh, is that something that Garth Lagerwey wants to do? Is that uh, a nostalgia trip that obviously, you know, Tata Martino is a very quality head coach and any team in the league would be lucky to have him. But uh, it is a question that, uh, you know, is that something that Atlanta United wants to do for the head coach position? But you know, what was interesting was the technical director for Inter Miami, Chris Henderson, who has been rumored to uh, Atlanta United as well. Uh, and there is that uh, connection with Garth Lagerway. Well, he tweeted uh, the day after uh, Tata Martino left, uh, he tweeted, quote, decision making is easy when your values are clear. Uh, quote, Roy Disney Pass it on leadership quote. Very, very interesting that that happened right after Dr. Martino left. So, I mean, you could read it some ways, but, uh, you know, is that 
Is that a dig at Martino? Is that explaining Martino's resignation? Uh, I mean, it's just, yeah, very, very perplexing. And uh, I'm, I'm not really sure how to make it, make uh, what to make of it, but it definitely is something that we will uh, we'll find out if uh, Chris Henderson becomes, you know, uh, kind of someone that doesn't stay at Inter Miami either. Uh, and you know, who knows? Who knows what uh, what really will be the uh, the case? We will have to see. But uh, speaking of former LA United. Uh, you know, personnel, Joseph Martinez, well, uh, Montreal, they declined to exercise the option for uh, Joseph. And yeah, according to uh, the AJC, uh, well, he apparently told Doug Roberson that uh, he would love to return to Atlanta United. But uh, Doug Roberson said that he didn't think it would happen. I mean, it's also that it's uh, Joseph Martinez had 12 goals this year. Uh, you know, obviously a far cry from you know the 31 that was uh, you know a record breaker in his MVP season in 2018. But it is definitely a question of you know would we do that? Would Atlanta United want to entertain that? Obviously, uh, there has been a little bit of uh, you know kind of uh, an acrimonious exit but Joseph Martinez you know obviously still quality to some degrees but it is also as well can his legs handle it for what he would probably want to make uh, which was which would be starter money and you know is that something and the route that Atlanta would want to go it's a really big question and I'm not so sure either. Joseph Martinez is obviously, you know, tugs at the heartstrings for Atlanta United fans. And, you know, he's done so much for the city of Atlanta and the club. But, yeah, it's, I don't know. Has the ship sailed? I'm not so sure right now is the time. I think, uh, you know, a, uh, a starting striker that uh, can press from the front can give us energy and yeah really get in behind is kind of what uh you know kind of what we're looking for i think but there's no doubt the uh the finishing ability of joseph martinez like that's never in question but uh yeah so uh next bit of news fabrizio romano he uh he reported that the potential head coach candidate patrick vieira well, he has been appointed the job at Genoa uh, in Serie A. And yeah, that's a person that obviously was linked to Atlanta United. Apparently one of the four candidates that Atlanta United uh, interviewed, according to the AJC. Uh, the other candidates aren't really, uh, you know, kind of revealed. But uh, yeah, Vieira... Apparently was one of them, but, you know, obviously LA United have still been playing in the playoffs. Rob Valentino has been uh, inspiring not only the players, but the fans. And, you know, maybe it was something that uh, Vieira didn't want to wait. He wanted to coach now and, you know, the opening there, he thought, okay, yeah, he can still stay in Europe. I mean, you know. Uh, it's somewhere that he's familiar, obviously, with, uh, maybe not obviously, but, uh, you know, at least uh, knowing his history there, uh, playing with Juventus as well. So, you know, he knows the league. Uh, you know, Vieira is obviously a, a very, very uh, seasoned um, and an experienced person uh, across football circles. And so, you know, Vieira... I think this is a big miss, in my opinion. Uh, but it is one of those things that, uh, you know, he has to, to kind of look out for himself. And uh, if the timing isn't right, if he's still having to wait because we're still in the playoffs, well, you know, he's going to do what he has to do. So, but uh, according to Garth Lagerway, uh, well, he spoke to 92 uh, 9 the game. 
uh, with Dukes and Bell, and uh, he spoke about Rob Valentino, and he said, quote, uh, well, uh, Mike Bell's question was, uh, and I think a, a very good question in here, uh, he said, quote, understood or I understand that he's been the interim twice and sometimes when you're the interim uh, you're inheriting a pretty bad situation or a transitional situation at best certainly the players love this guy and what he's been able to accomplish why bother going to Europe or elsewhere to find some guy who's going to cost you more money than potentially what you could do with Rob Valentino and just make him your coach well Garth Lagerway he answered said, uh, quote, Hey, you know what? The good news is that I've been in this situation before, as hard as that is to believe. In 2016, with the Seattle Sounders, I hired Brian Smetzer as the interim coach, and he wound up winning the title, and we wound up working together for the next seven or eight years. So, look, this is a matter of going through... Uh, uh, through the process, making sure you find the right guy, and there's no rush right now. We want to focus on the team. We want to focus on trying to win a championship, doing everything we can. Rob and I have a really good relationship. I really enjoy working with him. We'll sit down after the season and we'll figure it out. Uh, Carl Dukes also uh, asked, so what would make you hire him? What qualities uh, do you think uh, you need in our next coach uh, or in our next manager that maybe he doesn't possess? or that you feel like you're looking for and maybe are not in the building. Garth Lagerwey, he said, quote, I don't think there's any quality that Rob doesn't possess. He's done great. I have nothing but good things to say about him. What I would say that uh, say is that Rob, by his age and by his experience, is less experienced than some other guys in the league. Uh, if he gets the permanent job, he would be the second youngest head coach in the league. And at Atlanta United, we're not in the business of taking chances. We're not in the, uh, we're not going to take flyers on people. We have the ability because of our fan base, because of our track record, because of our resources. We have a big club. We can get a proven outcome. And Rob has a chance to prove himself. He's doing it. He's in the process of doing it. And nobody is saying that he is improving it so far. Uh, it's how far can he take it? And look, if it takes all, uh, if he takes it all the way and uh, he wins it, then that's the easiest decision for me because I, uh, for me that I've ever had to make. And then there's no controversy, there's no proving anything. Then he's a proven winner, and away we go. So definitely fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Um, I mean, obviously. If Rob Valentino wins LA United an MLS Cup, I mean, yeah, it is the, the job is his. If he doesn't, well, then, yeah, there are, I think, major questions. If he gets us to the final and maybe we don't win in, uh, uh, you know, in a kind of uh, last minute, last gasp type of way, uh, maybe it's a different story, but. It seems like, yeah, you know, maybe it's not Valentino's job, really. Uh, it's only if he wins it. And, uh, I mean, that's how I read it. That's, uh, you know, obviously the whole taking flyers on uh, and, you know, what would be one of the youngest head coaches in the league. It's definitely something that uh, has to play a part. And, yeah, I think Lagerway is going to do his due diligence to find the best candidate. And so for LA United, I think that is the best scenario for sure. Is there some uh, some corporate speak here for sure? Uh, you know, saying that uh, I don't think there's any quality that Rob doesn't possess, but then it really does come down to experience. And uh, yeah, you know, sometimes it's a chicken and egg. You don't have experience until you get the experience. But, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of fans that are clamoring for Rob Valentino to get the job. Uh, you know, for some, he has proven himself immensely and, uh, you know, they think that he deserves it. Now, yeah, it's it's definitely tough. I mean, I, I think Valentino, you know, he has some things to prove, obviously, uh, because, you know, he, uh, he didn't have the very best 
regular season. Uh, it was, you know, kind of uh, a, a bit of a roller coaster still, but he didn't have two DPs either. So, yeah, you know, the caveats are very important. The the reasons why, I mean, you know, the roster is not complete, and yet he's been able to, uh, in a cup competition, really do some damage. And especially in the run-in, uh, especially on decision day, I mean, it's just these things do matter in that respect. Uh, especially, you know, if it is a cup competition, you want to be able to, uh, you know, when you're in those uh, in those scenarios, you win those cups. Well, yeah, I mean, let's let's be honest. It's like okay. You know, MLS, with the Supporter Shield, it's not the most important trophy. It just really isn't. But uh, unless you're, you know, of course, the Club World Cup and Inter Miami and you have Messi. I mean, yeah, unprecedented stuff there. But uh, for most of the other teams, it is where, okay, you will have to win MLS Cup to, you know, and a Champions League to be able to uh, you know, kind of play a part in that. And uh, I think that details the importance normally. So, yeah, very, very interesting stuff. Uh, yeah, it's uh, just going to be very, very curious. But, um, yeah, let's move on to the next bit of news. Uh, Lanus has permanently signed Marcelino Moreno. Uh, yeah, basically the uh, the club executed the obligation to purchase the uh, the player until December 2027. The fee is two million dollars net plus a two hundred thousand uh, dollar kind of uh, I guess uh, in bonds, which is uh, kind of what they uh, Cesar Mer Luis Merlo uh, reported. But uh, yeah, there is not an uh, an exit clause, and uh, AJC they reported that. Uh, and United will receive a sell-on fee from the Moreno transfer. Uh, no reported fee quite yet, but uh, definitely very, very interesting. But uh, according to Cesar, Cesar Luis Merlo as well, Santiago Sosa will be sold to Racing Club, the uh, club that he is on loan to this season. And their club president, uh, Victor Blanco, uh, they will pick up the buy option for the four million dollar reported fee for eighty percent of his rights. So, uh, yeah, Santiago Sosa uh, will become a permanent Racing Club player. Uh, you know, obviously, when he uh, came into Atlanta United, it was very much a player that's I think. It looked like he had a bright future, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think the the lack of mobility, the uh, the misfit in our system, uh, he was definitely more of a Gabriel Hainsey type of player, and didn't really fit, you know, the systems that uh, we had subsequently after that. So, uh, wish Santiago Sosa the best. Uh, I think he's a quality player. It's just yeah, uh, unfortunately. Uh, just not in the future plans and getting 4 million is pretty incredible. So, uh, but yeah, uh, that does it for the news and it gets us into the mailbag and then you guys send the questions in through IG story and discord. Uh, please continue to do so. We might answer your question in the future, but I need a sip of water because I am a little bit under the weather. Uh, have been fighting a little bit of cough, but uh, yeah, bear with me here. But yeah, okay, let's get into the mailbag. Uh, Nick in the ATL, uh, his question uh, comes first. He is the highest level uh, Patreon member uh, in our Patreon fam, so he gets his question answered first. Uh, he asks, here's a different but topical question. Regarding the playoff beards that me and Drew, one of our other uh, Patreon members, uh, have for good luck, what other superstitious things are there in football around the world that you know of? Definitely a very interesting question, uh, and appreciate that. It's uh, definitely a good mix-up, um, just to kind of keep it refreshing. Uh, 
I mean, I think there's a lot of players that uh, don't wash their socks, uh, don't wash maybe other undergarments. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, you know, if they are playing well, they're not going to uh, really change too much. And it's something that is, I think, prevalent in a lot of uh, sports. But, uh, yeah, you know, football, soccer, no different as well. But uh, I've also heard... Yeah, like players kissing the bald heads of their teammates uh, for good luck, which, you know, uh, if you are uh, maybe a player that is good friends with a, a player that has a bald head, then okay, you know. Uh, so, you know, I could see Dax McCarty maybe doing that to Brad Guzan. Uh I think Brad Guzan would probably allow, if there's one player, it's, it's probably Dax McCarty at the moment. Uh, especially with uh, Dax McCarty's uh, revelation that uh, if he scores, that he will do uh, the Braguzan getting lost in the net celebration. And, man, it's that. Like, if he does, well, yeah. I mean, it's going to be scenes. It's going to be just effing amazing. But uh, I think also for McCarty, if... I mean, you know, obviously he, if he's going to shoot, we're going to have to get him in good positions. But I mean, just <laughs> shoot as many times as possible because I'm sure we all want to see that. But uh, yeah, so as well, uh, there's like, uh, you know, the, the presenter, Gary Lineker, uh, former Leicester City striker as well. Well, uh, there's some things where... Uh, you know, some players, they won't, uh, and he's kind of like famous for this, where they won't shoot on goal in the uh, the, the warm-ups and, uh, yeah, the kind of uh, pre-game stuff because they don't want to waste goals. So they will basically, they will forego that and uh, essentially not warm up in that respect. And, I mean, that that's also very interesting. But... Yeah, definitely, I'm sure there are so many superstitions, but uh, those are the ones that, that I can recall. So, uh, next question comes from Omar, uh, two, 3237. Since Vieira is out, how confident are you guys on the FO not nailing the coach situation? So, not nailing the coach situation. Or how confident are you guys in the FO nailing it? Uh, it's kind of a kind of unclear question but I would say in terms of if we're confident in the front office nailing the uh, the the coach decision I mean I would say I'm at a an 80% right now uh, I think they have you know Garth Lagerway has a lot to do he, he has to hire a technical director he has to hire a head coach he has to get two more DPs and definitely still replenish the roster in the offseason like he has it all to do and do I hope that he can do this uh, all in this offseason of course but is it a tall task yes it is and uh, yeah 80% I think is uh, a pretty good uh, confidence meter for Garth Lagerway he he still has something to do though so uh, and a lot to do, but uh, yeah. Next question comes from uh, Jimmy Cabrera eighty three. Do you think about Rob Valentino should stay if we win the MLS Cup? I mean, I think Garth Lagerway thinks so, and I would think so as well. I mean, you know, obviously he still has things that he needs to you know prove in some respects in the regular season, but if he does it in a cup competition in the best competition for uh, MLS, well then, yeah, I would say so. Uh, but, uh, yeah, next question comes from uh, Patty Ice underscore 14. Are there any right-wingers on the market that Atlanta United should sign? I think that's interesting. I mean, obviously, Saba Lautanitze is a right-winger. Uh, he has been playing a little bit on the left as well. Uh, kind of just roaming, I mean, uh, right wing back recently in the playoffs. Uh, I mean, I think just winger in general, 
I think, yeah, maybe it's more of a left winger that we need. Uh, I think Saba has proven that he can play on the, the right and cut in with his left as well. I think it might be easier to find a, uh, a left winger. And so, uh, in terms of uh, wingers on the market, man, like th these questions always are very, very, you know, difficult to answer because it requires us to uh, be scouts for Atlanta United. And uh, honestly, it is, you know, just not something that, uh, you know, we're constantly doing uh, where, you know, and any of the players that have come in, it's always been a little bit more of a left field choice. I mean, say Shande Silva, Saba Lapchenitze. It's not, they're not players that, uh, you know, are, I think, on our radar normally. Uh, obviously, the MLS players that uh, are around, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the wingers that are performing, well, you know, can we poach them? I mean, I'm not so sure. It's possible if we throw money at them, but uh, you know, I'm not so sure that we should necessarily throw money at the left winger position. I think uh, a DP for sure for the striker position, absolutely. A DP for a number eight, uh, a box to box midfielder, I think absolutely. For a left winger, I think we can get away with not having that. Um, maybe it's a TAM player. Maybe it's, uh, you know, a player from, uh, you know, another club. I mean, I would think Espinoza from San Jose Earthquakes would be a fantastic uh, move. But obviously with uh, Bruce Arena uh, moving over there, they're going to want to keep their best player. So I think that's the difficulty with MLS is, you know, any of the players that we might want well, yeah, they might be just too expensive for LA United to a degree. Or we, you know, with the space that we do have, uh, you know, roster wise, well, you know, should we shoot for the moon? Should we try to get, you know, a player like Antoine Griezmann, like, uh, you know, second striker type of thing, uh, you know, that type of position? Uh, you know, if we're talking about big names, I mean, it's just, it's a really tough uh, answer to, to, to give you, uh, especially in MLS, unfortunately. But, uh, but yeah, uh, in terms of that, that is the mailbag and let's get into the match preview. So yes, uh, it is a uh, one game playoff uh, for this round. It won't be a three game series. But 3.30 on Sunday on 11-24, uh, uh, it will be LA United versus Orlando City at Inter and Co. Stadium. Ninth in the East versus fourth in the East. Uh, Orlando City are the highest seed in uh, the Eastern Conference. And yeah, obviously Atlanta United have to play away for the entirety if we advance. But uh, yeah, the uh, last match for Atlanta City, they won the penalty shootout against Charlotte FC. And uh, LA United, we beat them, of course, on October 21st, 2-1. And uh, yeah, you know, famously with kind of the FEA, uh, you know, kind of poster as well. I mean, it's definitely... You know, a team that's, uh, there's history, there's a bit of a rivalry as well, probably our most heated rivalry, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, there's other clubs that, uh, you know, maybe MLS wants to be able to uh, kind of pit against NLA United, but I think it's been the, the most the most controversial, the most heated in terms of uh, what you see on the pitch. And honestly, sometimes kind of the most lopsided. But uh, yeah, I mean, like I mentioned at the top of the show, uh, yeah, it's going to be our first match against them in the playoffs, even though we played 21 matches against them. Uh, but yeah, it'll be the first time meeting in the... Uh, the postseason, but uh, yeah, LA United in the last six have won three against them. Uh, 
Orlando City have only won one and drawn two. And, you know, uh, I think that that's the, the interesting bit is that when we've been good, they haven't really been that good. And then uh, when Orlando City has been good, we've not been good. So, uh, you know, not that we've been good this year, but uh, obviously we have been on an unprecedented run for sure. So uh, Oscar Pereja, their head coach, uh, he said, quote, believe me that I think about things would be if it happened. Uh, talking about uh, when he took the reins ahead of the 2020 season uh, for Orlando. And this club has been establishing a culture for the last five years. I think the step has been big, but we need so badly to win the league. I've been in the league as well for many years. We need to win it. So, yeah, they absolutely want to win MLS Cup. I mean, who doesn't? But, yeah, I mean, he has been at the helm there for half a decade already now. And, uh, you know, obviously he's done a very good job for them. Finished second last year. Uh, finished fourth this year. And... Uh, yeah, they're the highest seed left in the Eastern Conference, like aforementioned. So, you know, they're a club that, uh, with the, uh, you know, kind of really key signings uh, in terms of, uh, man, you know, uh, this offseason. And, you know, Luis Muriel, uh, a big, big player for them. Nicolas, uh, Nicolas Lodero, uh, you know, obviously a, a, an MLS legend. Uh, with Seattle Sounders, but uh, yeah, a very experienced player and playmaker that uh, has performed for them this year as well. Facundo Torres, uh, I would say he's their their talisman. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, Torres he had 14 goals this season. Uh, Duncan McGuire had 10 uh, assist wise. They have some pretty good numbers uh, spreading across uh, their team. Uh, Lodero, aforementioned, he has seven assists this season. Uh, you know, Martin Ojeda, he has nine assists and, uh, you know, not as many games. Um, and, you know, just kind of uh, 24 starts. And so, you know, definitely a club that has uh, performed very well and spread, spread the goals pretty much around uh, the team. And so... Uh, you know, Muriel, a, uh, a very good player for them. And, uh, you know, he's just been someone that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to look out for, but you know, they, uh, they, of course, uh, at their house, we were able to take care of business, uh, you know, against the Disney kitties and, you know, the, uh, the, the style that they play, the, you know, they showed that. Uh, in the previous match, that they like to play possession football. They're uh, kind of a team that uh, if they score first, they're very good at protecting the lead. Uh, they attack down the wings uh, pretty often, but uh, not necessarily the best at finishing their, uh, their scoring chances. Uh, and yeah, in terms of... Uh, opponents usually play pretty aggressively against them, uh, like to press them, uh, basically allow them to, to have the ball at times. Uh, there's maybe some listless possession at, uh, you know, at moments, but, you know, uh, I think Charlotte showed that, uh, you know, there is kind of a bit of a, uh, a thing that you can play against them in, that's, uh, yeah, you can kind of keep them off the board by just being very stout defensively, uh, you know, playing very, very um, disciplined and, uh, you know, kind of a, a football that basically hits them with kind of a smash and grab. And, uh, you know, for Orlando City, uh, match facts wise, According to who scored, they've drawn their last three matches. They've been drawing at both halftime and full time in their last three matches as well. And there have been under two and a half goals scored in Orlando City's last three matches. So, uh, you know, not going to be a very high scoring match, probably. And so, yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting uh, for LA United uh, how we can really attack them and. I think it'll be 
kind of very similar for uh, Atlanta United against Inter Miami, where okay, we'll soak up pressure. Uh, we will uh, be a team that uh, won't be trying to press up too high, but we'll be very direct. We will be uh, trying to very much uh, just get in the box, get the ball in the box, and not dally about. Try to score quickly, uh, as early as possible, and as well uh, often, obviously. So, you know, I think uh, with... The previous match against them, we were able to, uh, I think, really do this exact thing. And uh, can LA United do it again? I mean, it's if there are other clubs that like to play with the ball, and the United, this, this season anyway, are not really wanting the ball. And that plays right into our hands. But uh, so... Let's get into the unavailable players for Atlanta United. Brooks Lennon, of course, with the shoulder uh, surgery. He is out. Quentin Westberg, uh, very likely with the concussion protocol, still out as well. But, uh, yeah, let's get into the predicted starting 11 then. So, Brad Guzan, obviously, between the sticks, he has been absolutely killing it between, uh, you know, in front of goal and... Uh, I mean, it's it's one of these things. He is not only winding back the years, but he is inspiring a lot of fans, thinking that okay, maybe he might be able to, you know, maybe be uh, the the starter next year. And you know, that hasn't always been the case for Braguzan uh, in the last few years, where a lot of people have been calling for his head, but. Yeah, incredible stuff by Braguzan. Nine saves against Inter Miami in the last match. But uh, yeah, uh, and for uh, the back line, uh, I mean, it seems like it's been a little bit of like right wing back, left wing back uh, with Amador and Saba. I'm sticking with that. Uh, Hernandez, Gregerson, Williams uh, in the back line. Uh, McCarty, Schleich, Fortune for me in the midfields. Uh, Saba, Moranchuk, uh, kind of, or sorry, Moranchuk and Tiare rather, uh, as, um, you know, the, the players up top are forwards. And I think it's been effective. It's, uh, you know, not maybe the prettiest always, but it's something that I think uh, can really catch teams out. And, and you know, you need to be as clinical as possible like we have been. Jamal Tiari obviously had a uh, brace last match. May it continue. But the odds, according to Bet365, are just not in our favor uh, in this one. But when are they? I mean, we've had uh, far less percentage of uh, chances to win in, uh, in previous matches. Uh, and it's not quite that low, but... Uh, for Atlanta to win, they have it at 59.9%. Uh, a draw at 26.3%. It would go to uh, to penalties, I believe, in uh, in this. And then, uh, yeah, Atlanta United, we have a 21.1% chance of winning. So, not the highest. But, yeah, against the Disney Kitties, I think there's just uh, these odds kind of go out the window sometimes. And... I definitely hope that uh, United can uh, do a little bit more of the same as we have been. Uh, but also, yeah, you know, we'll have to be stout defensively. We'll have to, uh, you know, be a collective unit to make sure that we can keep out Orlando City. But that gets us to the score prediction. And the biggest question is, yes, will we be able to win this and advance I think it's a 2-1 win. I think we can take care of business against the Kitties and advance to the next round, uh, who would basically be against either uh, one of the New York clubs, uh, New York Rebels and NYCFC. So what do you guys think? What's your score prediction? Let us know in the comments below. But yeah, uh, the question of the day now, super simple. Does Rob Valentino keep the uh, permanent job for head coach if he wins MLS Cup? 
Let us know what you think in the comments below. Looking forward to what you have to say. But guys, that is the episode there and there. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.